Hello guys, welcome back. Now let's have a look over our new ADC that is analog to digital converter and it is MCP3428 and to search this sensor let's roll upon the website that is controlleverything.com and here we have to type in for the sensor for the ADC exactly and it is MCP3428 and by searching it let's see what we got here as you notice it's a 16 bit four channel analog to digital converter and these are some more prominent features of this very ADC and you can also purchase the sensor from this side right from here furthermore I will be interfacing the ADC MCP3428 with a Raspberry Pi and the software platform will be a Python code and let's go to the source tab and here comes the Python code sample you can download the Python code sample as a zip file right from here also, you can get your code from github.com and the repository there is control everything community. Now let's have a look over the hardware connections we need and see how to get there. Well, in the hardware setup uh, for the connections, what do we require is this, a uh, Raspberry Pi, which you are able to see on my screen. And these are the GPI pins of the Raspberry Pi. Next, we require an I2C shield which you can see and it's available on the website controleverything.com. The real reason we are using this shield is to make easier connections with other I2C devices. So for that, gently place the I2C shield over the GPI pins of the Raspberry Pi and make a connection. Next, we need to power up our Raspberry Pi and for that we require a micro USB cable just like that and gently insert it over here, the power jack. And for the internet connection, there are two options. First of all, this here is an Ethernet cable or a LAN cable. Now gently insert it over this Ethernet jack and you are done with the connections part. Now for the other internet connection, we can also have a adapter, a wireless nano USB adapter, just like that. And you can have on the USB port. Next, this here is our analog to digital converter that is MCP3428. And this here is a connecting cable. Now make sure that while making a connection with the cable and the ADC, the brown wire of the cable should be connected to the ground terminal of the ADC and similarly to the ground terminal of the I2C shield. So these are the connections we required for this hardware. Now let's proceed with the code. Now for the interfacing section part, we have to log into github.com to get the code. And here we are with the repository that is control everything community. After getting inside it, we have the ADC that is MCP3428 and let's proceed further and this here is the Python code. Now let's have a look over the instructions part. As you notice, we have to download and install SMS library on the Raspberry Pi and this link will help us to do the installation carefully. When I open it, you see a lot of instructions, dependencies, commands which will help you for the installation of this library that is SMS. Now get back to the instructions part and we have to download an orchid call it's optional for the code onto the raspberry pi and this command will help us to run the python code note it down now get back to the python code and you will notice that it's a .py extension file and after getting that first thing you notice in the code that we have imported sms and time libraries and we have defined the address of the sensor uh, adc specifically that is 0x68 now in the writing section part, we are going to send configuration command which is continuous conversion mode channel 1 12 bit resolution which comprises of 0x10. The writing part is here. In the reading section as you notice we are going to read data back from the register that is 0x00. Two bytes we are reading and after that we have the conversion of the data into 12 bits and we have followed some formulas, instructions which were provided in the data sheet of ADC that is MCP3428. At the very end of our code, we have the output data to be displayed onto the screen, which is the digital value of analog input. Now let's proceed further and see the working. Now let's have a look over the working environment. And in this part, we need to copy this entire code of the Python and just like that. And now open up the terminal for the Raspberry Pi connected via internet. And here we need to create a new file as you are able to see on my screen. And it's a .py extension and here we paste the entire code and after that we save it and then this is the command for the compilation and here we are we are running the code this is the command and when I run it we have the digital value of analog input which is coming constant and it's zero which means there is nothing connected on either 
the terminals are grounded but when i try to connect a battery voltage a double a battery of 1.5 volt across the two ends of the terminal for the sensor and i run the command we have the digital value of analog input and it's coming almost constant 1032 and 1031 it's almost constant because there is a very small change which means the sensor is responding well it's covering well and now let's have a look over the applications and some of the features the MCP3428 is a low noise and high accuracy 16-bit Delta Sigma analog to digital converter family member of MCP342X series. This device can convert analog inputs to digital code with up to 16 bits of resolution. Due to high accuracy in analog conversions, the applications of this ADC are portable instrumentation and consumer goods, temperature sensing with RTD thermistor and thermocouple, bridge sensing for pressure, strain and force, base scales and battery fuel gauge, factory automation equipment. Well, you can have this sensor and you can purchase it from controleverything.com and you can get the code from resource tab. From this site, you can download the code as a zip file. Also, you can get the code from github.com and the repository there is control everything community. In the end, I would like to make it clear that if you have any doubt regarding any part of this sensor or video, you can have your queries on controleverything.com and you can post your comments on the community page on this website. For articles and blogs, you can have a look over on instructables.com and to subscribe more video tutorials like this, you can have a look over our YouTube channel. In the end, I hope you enjoyed this video and had a good one yourself. Thanks a lot for watching.